In this video, we're going to be performing a static structural analysis of a two element system and we're going to be modeling it using solid, shell and beam elements and we're going to compare the results between them. So let's get started by dragging over a static structural cell. We're going to add in aluminium as a material. So general materials up to aluminium alloy and add. Let's import the geometry. So we're going to use the solid geometry first. And we open up the model cell. Okay, now to get started, let's change the material from steel to aluminium. So you can double select the bodies and change the material to aluminium for both. Uh, let's investigate the connections. So here we can see a contact region is formed between the tube face and the two faces making up the rectangular hollow section. So these contacts are already well defined so we don't need to change anything. Uh, in the measure let's say the default element size should be set to around 10. Uh, let's use adaptive sizing and let's set the transition to slow and the span angle center to fine. And this should create a pretty good mesh. So let's generate it. So now if we zoom in we can see that the mesh is pretty good. And now we can set up our boundary conditions. So in this case let's set the fixed support to be on the end of the cylindrical face. And let's apply a load of 100 newtons for example to the end of the hollow section and let's say it points in the negative y direction okay this model is now ready to solve so let's solve the system okay now that we have a solution let's investigate the results so we insert deformation and we can evaluate that and we can see that the deformation is around 3.6 mil. Now if we insert a stress contour, it's the equivalent von Mises, and we can see the stress distribution. Okay, up next let's analyze a shell model. So if we repeat the process and drag over a static structural to the workbench, we can connect the engineering data cells and we can import the geometry. So in this case I'm going to have to browse and import the shell geometry. And let's open up the model cell. When using shell geometries we need to specify a thickness. So I already specified the thickness in space claim, but here the thickness of the rectangular section is 1.2 mil and the thickness of the circular section is 2 mil. And let's set the material to aluminium and let's quickly generate the mesh. So we'll set the default size to 10. Uh, let's use adaptive sizing um, to slow and fine. Let's keep the meshes as close as possible and update. So here we want to try to get the cylinder inside the rectangular hollow section and have the rectangular hollow section point inside. So here it looks like it's already pointing inside. So if we go to the shell, we can see that the offset type top seems to work. So if we set it to bottom, it expands outwards, which is not what we want. So we want to set it to top and that looks like it's working. And if we go to shell here, which sets the cylinder body, and if we set this to top, it shrinks to inside. And this is what we want to see. But um, currently we don't have any contacts specified, so if we ran this, the there'd be nothing constraining the rectangular hollow section, and it would just accelerate downwards. So to create a connection, we need to go connections, right click, insert manual contact region. 
So now we want to select the target region to be the outer face of the cylinder. And we want to set the contact region to be the edges which the cylinder will contact the rectangular section. And now as before, let's set up our boundary conditions. So let's add a fixed support onto the end of the cylinder. This time it's an edge. And let's add the 100 newtons to the edge of the hollow section. So I need to select all the edges. And we can solve. So having a look at the results now. The maximum deformation is 3.9 mil, and the total stress is around 22 MPa. And now lastly, let's set up our line body. So same process as before. Except this time we're going to open up the space claim file. So on screen we can see the line bodies that have been extruded to beam profiles. So if we go here we can see the different beams. So to add a beam profile to, to a sketch, um, all you need to do is find the line which you want to put the beam profile on. You can use the prepare tool and add a profile. So here I've set up a circular tube and a rectangular tube profile. So you can just select from the profile library and just edit the parameters, or you can make your own. And then to create a beam profile, select the edge, make sure that you have the correct profile selected, and then click create. Okay, we've loaded the beam geometry into mechanical. Let's start out by changing the material. So we'll select the two bodies and change the type to aluminium. And now we need to deal with the contacts. So if we, go to con if we go to connections, insert manual, we go back up to the contacts. We need to allow for edge edge contacts. And now if we go here, we can select both our edges and generate the contact. Now if we go to the mesh and we select a sizing of 10 mil and we can generate. Now we have our mesh. So now we need to add the fixed support and the load. We need to add the fixed support onto the end of the circular profile. Then we need to add the load. Then if we go to display, we can draw the beam cross section. Now we can solve. So we can insert a deformation contour. And if we go to solution beam section results, yes, we can insert a von Mises stress contour as well. So here we can see the maximum stress is around 18 MPa and the max deflection is around 3.6 millimeters.